Marco, welcome to the team officially now. I actually got to sell a wonderful Tudor sub that we sourced from Adam. We actually just did a trade for an Explorer 2. I just got this watch in. In three, four days time, you managed to sell about 30, 40 grand worth of stuff. What's right. the reference of that Daytona? 16, 520. Who do you think has a better chance of selling that watch, you or him? Exactly. Guys, before you go on watching this video, please don't forget to hit all the buttons, the like, comment, share, subscribe if you're not subscribed, and enjoy the episode. Good morning, my children. Good morning. Uh, this is like second grade. Good morning, my children. Good morning, Father. What did you do to your hair? I had just something new. Marco's here. We're, doing, we're shooting a lot with Marco. Marco. How's it going? How's it going? When are you out of here, by the way? Friday. Friday, so I need to speak. Oh, it's Saturday. It's Saturday. Saturday. So tomorrow's your last day. I need, I need yeah. to sit down and speak with you. I'm gonna go downstairs. I'm gonna see. I need to get some shipments out. I see you guys are still standing. Really, you don't have to stand when I come in. You can sit. I was doing this before you came in. How's everybody doing? We are missing you. We are miss you. They are miss me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know, the video. She said she's bigger than my tall. <laughs> Should be uh, bigger than my tall. He has so many fans. <laughs> so yeah, many do you fans. know what they call you? They call you the shipping dominatrix. Yeah. <laughs> I can uh, write my autographer. <laughs> autographer? <laughs> Autograph. Someone said I, I want to work at LB under Natalie. Oh, <laughs> I'm sure he does. Alright, Natalie. So do you have the invoices from the show? There's a couple of things we need to get out like now. <laughs> the shipping dominatrix. That was great. Uh, what is shipping dominatrix? Do you know what a dominatrix is? Yes. You know, the, the women with whips and like leather outfits, like whip men. Ah! <laughs> I love it! Yo, she shows up with her outfit tomorrow morning. <laughs> I got a story for you. So we go into uh, this fancy restaurant, Prime. Ian shows up wearing shorts. <laughs> Not supposed to wear shorts. So, long story short, he comes in, they're like, Sir, I'm sorry you can't uh, wear shorts here, da 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 da. Uh, you're welcome to go home and change, but we can give you you know, some in-house pants. From the restaurant? Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> That's cool. Okay. No, no, wait, wait, wait. Look at the face though. <laughs> and I go, those are a little shorter. He's like, and, and he's like, well, what can I say? I got long legs. <laughs> you know what they say about long legs? Oh, so Marco's boy genius has a lot of knowledge when it comes to watch it, but that knowledge doesn't just come from the fact that he reads a lot, which he does, but it mostly comes from his passion for watches, and that's what I love the most. It's going to be great to have on the team because that knowledge and that passion will rub off on the rest of the sales department, and I'll be honest with you, I learned a thing or two since he's gotten here. First of all, Marco, welcome to the team officially now. He's gonna continue working for us as a consultant out of Canada. He's gonna spend some time here, going back and forth. So Marco's role, right? His real role is sales, right? That's what he wants to do. That's what he can be good at because he's extremely knowledgeable. The best part about him coming on into sales is the fact that he's able to create his own content. Another value that he brings to the table is the content department. We have a wonderful content department. We have four photographers, we have four videographers, we have social media people. They're great at what they do, but it's that knowledge, those, those little things that Marco brings to the table in terms of quirky little pieces of knowledge that's gonna take that to the next level. Now he's gonna have the power of LB behind him in terms of content. And some of those descriptions are missing that that piece of history, that unique fact, stuff that he knows off the top of his head, right? But let's specifically talk about plugging you into sales. It's actually a very easy process. Luxury Bazaar's uh, page and my page are connected to Zendesk because I get a tremendous number of DMs that I cannot handle. It also results in, in inquiries, right? Is it like online or? It's all online. Okay. It's all online. So it's you, can a have it your, yeah. you can have it on your phone. You can have it on your, it's obviously more convenient on a computer than on your phone, but you can yeah. still use it on your phone. But what we often do here, myself, Anna, Adrian, is we'll actually take our leads and we'll pass them on to the sales. Like I try to pass as many sales leads to the sales department to be taken care of once I'm confident that you can handle it so that you do what you do and I do what I do. What I always encourage my salespeople to do is also learn how to buy, learn, i.e. learn the market. You don't necessarily have to say, oh, I'll pay you 10 grand, but it'd be nice for you to say, I think the watch is worth 10 grand. And then Adrian can tell you either right or wrong, and he can also tell you why. But overall, Marco's role here is going to be as a salesperson slash content creator. So I'm a true believer that the number one thing that sells is knowledge. He's got plenty of that, and as far as the rest is concerned, this is where the team will make up for his lack of knowledge, perhaps off the market, of pricing and things of that nature. And that is why I keep reiterating the fact that he's a great addition to the team. 
how the month is done. You've been here five days. What the f did you sell? So I actually got to sell a wonderful Tudor sub that we sourced from Adam. We actually just did a trade for an Explorer 2 uh, for a Datejust and a Tudor, which was really nice. He actually received a yes, sir. I was really happy. And I just got this watch in. Zenith Defy El Primero. That looks like a Nick watch. Should we ask him what he thinks? Hey, Nick, tell me what you know about this watch. Uh, it's very loud and I don't like it. Since... Tell me what you know about the watch. I, I didn't say what you don't like about the watch. Sorry, I didn't have my flashcards ready. What do you know about this watch? All right, so this is actually the new generation of Zenith El Primero's, at least with the new movements, tenth of a second high beat movement. So if, what that means is if you were to engage a chrono, see that second hand running? Right. It's once every 10 seconds. It will actually go through the dial as opposed to a usual chrono, which is 60 seconds. Now, if you stop it, you reset it. Works like a normal chrono grab. Now, interesting thing about this movement, it features the Zenith El Primero movement. What is that? They're the first kind of Swiss automatic chronograph movement. And they've been featured in a number of watches, namely... Including? The what's the most famous watch? The Daytona. Thing? Okay, yes. at least you know something. What's right. the reference of that Daytona? 16520. Thank you. You see what he did there? Again, in no way, shape, or form was Marco trying to troll Nick or trying to make fun of him. I literally told him this is what he needs to do. Drill the team. And that will, again, increase the overall knowledge within the team. Another interesting thing is they actually almost lost this movement. So at the beginning of the Quartz Crisis, Zenith ordered all of their watchmakers basically to destroy all the machinery, everything, all the schemes to make uh, the El Primero movement because they thought the future was Quartz. All the brands did. And there was a watchmaker by the name of Charles Vermeaux is his name, who actually defied Zenith's orders and they brought it in an attic. You can actually go to Switzerland and find that attic where he hid all the original schemes and all the original machines of the El Primero movement from the 60s. And then a decade later, when Zenith was looking, well, he said, well, I got this attic up here with all of the equipment, basically, to make the El Primero movement. Did and he make it, money on that? Uh, technically, I don't know if he made money, but I know Zenith has commemorated him in, like, so many different limited edition pieces. So, yeah, as we know today, Zenith may not have existed were it not for one watchmaker and his brother-in-law. This is exactly the type of knowledge I want my sales team to have. Memorizing reference numbers and retail pricing is not watch knowledge. This is watch knowledge. Who do you think has a better chance of selling that watch, you or him? Exactly. Because but he is right, it is a very loud rotor. I immediately hear that and I think that my transmission's gonna blow. Like, <laughs> I, I swear to God, I put that watch on my wrist because I was gonna take that in. That's you. Right. That's you, and that's your opinion, and there's nothing wrong with that. Right, right now, you have a bunch of watches on your desk. What can you tell about Bell & Ross? I was served by two uh, college students that actually wanted to make the do tributes to pilot gauges. That's the World War One. See, that's good. Yeah. That's good. That's the type of information that I'm talking about. In all honesty, Marco is a great addition to the team. Uh, I've called him multiple times since, picking his brain about pieces that you know I couldn't find the information I was looking for online. So, Marco, thank you for schooling me. I will continue to give you cigars. Marco is 23. I know he looks 15, but he's 23, I I'm promise I'm 23, you. yes. We need to fact check that, yeah. Okay. ID, I, I, I want urine sample, ID, all that. So besides watches, apparently Marco is pretty knowledgeable in sports as well. And the only problem is he decided to argue with diehard Philly basketball fans, including Gary. And I think things got a little scary for him. If you know watches as good oh. as you know basketball, you're fired. <laughs> All right, so real quick, I know this might be a little confusing, but after a meeting with Roman, we were just discussing basically the basketball playoffs, who we thought was going to win, and naturally the GOAT conversation came up. And while I think historically Michael Jordan is very, very good, I don't personally think Michael Jordan is the greatest basketball player of all time, although I think he is certainly up there. And of course, Adrian and Gary both definitely agreed with that. The argument is that in the 80s, in the 90s, there weren't really a lot of good teams. That's why Jordan won consistently. That's what he said. Okay. Yes. Okay. The best team he played against was the Utah Jazz, two Hall of Famers. Does it? It's complete miss. And hold on. Hold on. We what, haven't about even met. what about the Phoenix Suns? They have one good player. What, what do you mean? Really? That was what, what, what about Kevin, uh, Kevin Johnson? You're comparing him versus a team with four Hall of Famers. And you're not going to mention Steve Kerr is the highest three point field goal percentage for a career in NBA history, more than Steph Curry, Ray Allen, Reggie Miller, any other player you want to say. And he, he threw did. 23 pointers in 10 years, man. Okay. Yeah, of course, he's and very, he his percentage is very high. This happened actually twice that I can remember, okay? First time is when you made the Michael Jordan comment, the second is when he made the Eminem comment. The Eminem sucks. Who, who said Eminem sucks? This guy. Okay. Bro, Eminem is not a good rapper. Oh! oh! <laughs> who, who wakes up in the morning and is like, let me listen to some Eminem? No, no, no. Everybody get the f out of this office and go back to work. One thing I learned since I started at Luxury Bazaar is 
Michael Jordan is the GOAT, and don't you ever argue with Gary. We're about to do an unboxing. Typical style, but we're adding a nice setup here. We're gonna be using the Luxury Bazaar YouTube channel. Finally, we're putting Marco on it, we're putting the sales team, and we're putting 60 second clips of unboxing so you guys can look at it whenever you want on YouTube, because that's where the money is. No, that's not what I meant. I meant like that's like where the action is. There's the Celsius talking. Oh yeah, all right, let me tighten it up. There you go. I might just wear these in my everyday life now. I'm gonna try to shoot photos with this. <laughs> Davis can see everything. Leave me alone, Kevin. I'm ready. Good morning. We have the Omega Trilogy, or 1957 Trilogy set, which includes a Railmaster, a Seamaster, and a Speedmaster. Uh, the 1957 was actually the Speedmaster was originally debuted, uh, and no, it was not originally intended for space travel or things of that nature. Contrary to popular belief, it was actually made for Italian car racers, believe it or not. Uh, I mean, just look at this watch. Like, it's badass. Let's just compare what the 57 Trilogy looks like to just my standard 002. Uh, let's hopefully go into a really good home uh, to a very good friend of mine, or client turned friend, and uh, I'm pretty excited about it. Out of the three here, I would go with the Railmaster, which is, or was, I believe, the second anti-magnetic watch to market. Uh, this was, I believe it was released in the late 1950s, because uh, the Milgas was designed in 54, released in 56, 57, depending on who you ask. Sorry, Roman. I would go with this. It's just a very sleek watch, and I mean, look, it's still significantly thinner than the Rolex Milgauss. And for an anti-magnetic watch, can't go wrong. Good on it. We got the 1957 Trilogy set. And this is the main reason why I think the Milgauss case should be thinner. So I did a video on this Trilogy set to tell me what each one represents. All right. So you have your anti-magnetic, which was released in, I believe, the late 50s. I know this was the second anti-magnetic, second or third one behind the Milgauss. You have your Diver, which was released, or Seamaster, which was released in 1948, and then the Speedmaster, which obviously was released in 1957. Contrary to popular belief, was not made for sp uh, space travel, was made for Italian car racers in the 50s. So let me ask you a question. Which you think is the biggest innovation out of the three? Seamaster. I agree with you. If you go the vintage route on this, uh, they're still like these can get really expensive depending right. on the year. Depending on condition. But, but these two, you can still pick them up for real. Like I've seen uh, some of the older, older Seamaster, not the ones going back to 1948. I'm talking about some of the ones from there around right, the right realm, around the 50s, 60s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can still pick them up relatively cheap around a $10,000 mark, which is pretty yeah, awesome. Yeah, for a vintage it. piece. That's why I always tell people you can always go back and find a deal. Right. I mean, granted, the watch originally retailed for probably $400, right. maybe. <laughs> but the accessories is where it's at with this yeah. stuff. I mean, the fact that you have three different NATO chefs, three different leather bands, and the actual tool straight from the Omega is sick. I mean, honestly, I think Omega took a bite out of the, and a lot of these companies do it, they take a bite out of um, the, the aftermarket guys, like the guys that make these leather straps, like NATO straps became a big to do. Everybody was making them, you can buy one for $2. Right. But these are nice, actually nice high quality, and they're actually a mega branded, which is, which is pretty cool. cool. So I pretty much knew as soon as I saw this box set when it came in a while ago that I was gonna sell it to another Omega fan. Uh, so Luther, thank you very much for picking up the Trilogy set. I hope that you figured out which watch you're gonna be wearing more. I had a good client of mine reach out. He wanted to do a trade for his 6701 Titanium for a bunch of Rolexes. So first watch he picked up was the 126613LB, the bluesy. Uh, next watch he picked up was a 126711 CHNR, which is the root beer. Uh, next he picked up a 126613LN, uh, which is the black dial. So next up we have uh, one of my favorites, which is the 116519LN. This is the white gold Daytona and Oyster Flex. So next up we have a 126710BLRO. This is a Pepsi on a Jubilee. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Would you go with Jubilee or Oyster Bracelet? Personally, I like the Oyster Bracelet, but I think the Jubilee looks a lot, uh, I guess, more exciting when you're wearing it. And the last watch will be this 116500LN. This is the Panda. 
So we're just happy to move this, honestly. It's been sitting in the inventory for a little bit, so glad we could get this one out and uh, pass it on to someone that will enjoy it. Marco, Anthony's old partner showed up, and of course the question on my mind, and I wanted to get a first hand, not from all the gossip on Reddit and everywhere else, as is where is he going, where is he going to be post the breakup? All right, so uh, let's talk about the obvious. And the obvious is the obvious is we re next? we rebranded um, the the channel. You guys going to be putting out content once a week? Are you going to try? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we're we're full we're full steam ahead. I mean, uh, like I said, we're full disclosure. I still have uh, thirty two minutes left in your first episode. <laughs> You've been watching it this whole time. <laughs> yeah, I think the story is people still want to see that that journey. Uh, I should say, not the story. It's but definitely a journey. a journey, and you know, I think it's going to be it's going to be unfolding for quite some time. I <clears throat> I'm just solely focusing on content. So like, I'm not even worried about selling watches at this point. I'm kind of just handing all that off to the sales team. Look, uh, I'm gonna turn the cameras off. I'm gonna talk to you about the investment aspect of things and then uh, we'll pick it up from there. Cool. Any case? Yeah, no problem. Let's cut the cameras. So we had to cut the cameras off because I actually wanted to talk to him in regards to some monetary issues and where he is financially. Because, you know, after a business breakup, it's usually both partners are not really left in a good place and it usually comes down to financial but overall we had a good meeting i think he is going in the right direction and i wish him all the luck in the world check out the new rebranded youtube channel that they made uh, for more updates on what marco is doing with grand caliber hi anna hi sorry for playing uh, phone tag <laughs> For your wife's watch, um, you mentioned yeah. she wants a white one. The first option that you um, sent me, that model yeah. is a newer model. I mean, they're going for kind of crazy prices right now. They're around 90,000. Oh, ouch. Right. Okay. wow. <laughs> As opposed to the older version, which is impossible to find in mint condition. But the new one is, is new and um, a little, a little overheated. Doesn't, yeah, 90 doesn't sound. I agree, and I'm, I'm giving you kind of yeah. a price range without, yeah. I don't have one in stock. That's what she wants. I can definitely look into the best price. How about um, just a Royal Oak? Okay, that's fine. We're partial to the diamond bezel. Though. Yes, the diamond, if she wants a diamond bezel, um, the Royal Oak offshore is it's pretty much it. Unless Probably. it's a, unless it's a Royal Oak date, um, either 33. Well, it's probably going to be too small for her. But it's it's also it's only yeah. it only comes on a stainless steel bracelet. Okay. Yeah, she wants at least a 36. I'm actually wearing right now. Well, I just put on my wrist. We just got from the show um, a Hublot Big Bang white with the diamond bezel with the rubber strap. Um, yeah. For the money, <laughs> it's a very good choice. Send me a picture. I'll send you a picture because honestly, when I saw it, I grabbed it and I put it on my wrist <laughs> just to take yeah. a picture. But now that we're talking, I mean, if this is yeah. what she wants for the price, I don't see. I think it's it's under fifteen thousand. Okay. Yeah, she, uh, she's an overall. I'll, I'll, I'll show it to her. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, usually, she, she can she can kind of look at it and and say right away yes or no. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. so Thank you so much. Have a good day. Bye bye. Just spoke to my client. He was looking for a watch for his wife. Um, he was interested in a Royal Oak Offshore Ladies watch. Um, so I gave him a few options. He wants it to be the white color. However, they don't make that anymore. However, I did find this Hublot this morning. So um, I know it's not an offshore, but it's a good, cheaper option for him. She wanted white one, we have it in navy. They don't make this um, in all white any longer. Um, which one would I go for? I actually love them both. This one for the money, I can't beat that for the look. They're both sporty pieces that you can pretty much wear with anything. So we'll see what he says. My name's Colin Case, I'm working with Chris today. Selling my 2019 sub, just kind of looking to get rid of it and then we made some money off of it. So just kind of needed some cash right now. So I've had this sub for almost three years now. I wear it every day. I do construction, so I've seen job sites. And I know your guys' YouTube and it just so happens I live in Newtown and I was like, oh man, this is like perfect situation, so. Definitely been worn. Looks pretty good condition overall though. Let me uh, take this up to Adrian real quick. Yeah, yeah, I'll get back to you. Yeah, appreciate it. And we're gonna take a look at the watch. Said it's good to go. Good. Finished the deal. We bought the yeah. Slip Mariner off of Colin here. He's happy. We're happy.
want to start out with a couple of shout outs. One, first one going out to my friend Marcus B. Williams. And he sent me a print, which is, hey Roman, something new I was working on. Hope you enjoy Marcus. Do I even want to know what this rag was used for? Oh, this is a beautiful day, just Look at that. A lot to say about Rolexes on straps. Normally not the most popular ones. I actually always like them. Like, I like the design of, on a strap. I guess I they tone on a strap. I like some of the other. A lot of the diamond encrusted, they just, oh, look at this up. I felt like this should have been like some rare vintage ones inside these rags. Yeah. Yeah. Frosted, 41 millimeter chrono. The last one we had was a purple one. This is the blacked out. Honestly, when the purple one first came out, I was just like, oh no. And then it kind of grew on me. And then I saw the black one. I think this is the perfect, the perfect frosted from AP. And it's also a piece unique because everyone will be different. I mean, they literally take a little hammer and chisel and basically hammer the watch away. So everyone will be different, so. Oh yeah, so now, okay, I take that back. Here we have a piece unique. <laughs> yeah, it's technically unique, right? Yeah, you're right, you're right. It's like it's like if you watch out there with a hand-painted dial, yeah. even though they may make a hundred of them, but there's still every single one of them is unique. Ooh, look at this dial. Whew. A meteorite diamond, 36. This is absolutely gorgeous. In fact, I think we wear this watch for the weekend. Well, after we put it in the system, but this is, Wow. And it's actually the right size for me. A 36 millimeter president would be the right size for my wrist. Another Rolex. Oh, it's another president. I don't know about you, Martha. My thing has always been that a gold president, A, should be yellow gold, and B, should have the champagne or gold dial, as I like to call it, because I feel like the, the, the president itself is about having a chunk of gold on your hand. Right. And nothing does it for me like just a yellow, plain champagne stick dial, yellow gold, champagne dial all together, just I don't know. This to me says president. It's the classic historical. Exactly. Yeah. The second alternative to that, he maybe like a white stick dial, I think. But all in all, when it's all gold like this, this, you know, obviously because of the president, this just screams Rolex president. Uh, here we have a another Rolex. Surprise. This one actually has a box with it. Oh, look at that. What would you like to say about the mill gas, Mr. Marco? Actually, you know what's interesting? Rolex always patents basically any innovation they do. You know they never patented this green Judy glass? Because apparently it's so hard to make that it's like, if, if somebody can replicate it, then Rolex say, okay, go ahead. <laughs> you know what I mean? Go ahead and do really? it. Really? They I never didn't patented that. this GB glass. They patent everything, everything from the plastic tag to the, to the, to the to even the, to the, the bezel cover. Absolutely everything. That just goes to show how hard it must be to make this GB glass. I did do for a new one. I actually was really, really thinking what well, this was 07 they came out with the newer yeah. version. Uh, I wasn't really expecting this watch as a wonder and new Mill Gauss. Yeah. And they just haven't I mean they, they started with the green, then it went to the blue and uh, they had the they had the white dial in it, but I felt like it was time. But do you know what it is too? So all modern Rolex are technically a magnetic. They all use silicone parts in their escapement. So right. they don't they don't need like the iron cage anymore, right? So they can slim out the profile, make it like really nice and I mean it's very wearable anyways, but you know, make it even I even just felt I felt like a redesign because if you look at the original, yeah. you know Do you do you bring back the rotating bezel? Yeah. Oh, that is yeah. it. And a honey, honeycomb dial too. Oh my god. I mean. Oh my god. The problem is, is we always speculate, we always dream, and then Rolex is just the same shit over. Yeah, over exactly. Here. They just change <laughs> well, they a couple really of parts. So and that's Point it. three it's millimeters. Case. How about a ladies' Nautilus? Something for the ladies. This is. We don't just sell men's watches. Right, Nina. Right. Nina, rock this for the weekend. Done. All right. Thank you guys for tuning in. I hope everybody has a great weekend. We'll see you Monday. Are you ready? So ready. So Gary called Nina and I into his office because he has new jewelry pieces that he wanted to teach us about. Nina and I, you know, need to post and learn and share content on those pieces. Okay, today we're gonna do some of the Hermes pieces. The model called Alchemy. This is a very rare piece, it's discontinued. There is only three available online, two of them belongs to us. So I want you girls to take one of each and sell it. Done. We have this very nice necklace. This is like, you wear it like a scarf. Okay, it's also Hermes. It's a, it's a newer piece. It's Hermes Kelly necklace, okay? It's all wrapped up. Nobody scratches this. Is that rare? 
This it's not rare, but uh, in U.S. they don't sell it. This was bought in Asia. Does it match the Kelly bag? Somehow? Yes, yes. Okay. It's a it's the same collection. It's a Kelly collection. There is a lot of like this is a Kelly bracelet. Okay. okay? This is Hermes Kelly bracelet. Okay. This is Alchemy rings. Rings mm -hmm. to match the bracelets. Okay. This is also Hermes little bracelet i think it's it's also yeah it's a kelly bracelet charm bracelet. yeah the, the charm the, the bag is a, it's a kelly bag okay this is a hermes finesse bracelet this is modern they still have this in stock okay okay i want you to take these pieces and i want you to sell them. okay put it on I'm super excited and super fortunate to be part of the amazing team here at Luxury Bazaar. And one thing that I do have to mention is the fact that I am going to be moving here to Pennsylvania full time. And one thing I was very lucky to have is a roommate here waiting for me. Marco, you got me my roommate, but sounds good, buddy. So Chris, is a good thing at least the car started on our way over, right? <laughs> Don't be hating on the Buick. It's a 96. God damn, See, it's older than me. Well, the neighbors are like, who are these kids? <laughs> this is the house. God damn, Chris. Did you do all this yourself? <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, Mikasa Sukasa, right? Is mm -hmm. that how you say it? We got kitchen in here. It's kind of basically a bachelor pad. There's literally yeah, nothing on the walls, pretty much. <laughs> I call this the Chris. This is the Pablo Picasso of the place. This is actually the one thing Chris tried to build, and there it is, it's right here. So this is gonna be our sculpture. Please Don't like be hating, like I said, I worked at Lowe's, but I unloaded trucks and ran port lists. Not like <laughs> yeah. I was handy. Oh, it is slanted. Dude, I'm telling you, it is 100% slanted. Wait, right? what? Me and Chris are pretty, I mean, we're pretty like quiet guys, you know, so uh, yeah. We get along pretty well. We're both yeah. watch geeks, so we, we talk watches pretty much 24-7. Yeah, otherwise we're pretty much just working the whole time, you know, just. Met responding to clients, mm -hmm. trying to find deals, and uh, yeah, just doing what we got to do to, to well, sell watches. <laughs> mm -hmm. Shout out to uh, Roman for finding this place. Yeah, Roman's a good dude, man. He he set us up really, really well. So, shout out to Roman, best boss you can have, man. Being here in Pennsylvania has allowed me to basically immerse myself as part of the team. It's really like I've been working here for honestly a few years, even though I just started. And we've done a ton of things, both on the buying side, especially the selling side, and a ton with respect to content creation. And so I'm super grateful and happy with how things have gone, and I'm so looking forward to what's to come. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Again, don't forget to hit all the buttons to help our channel grow. We're super excited to have Marco added to our team. Show him some love on social media. Follow him on Instagram. As well, follow the Luxury Bazaar YouTube channel. This is where Marco is gonna be putting out great watch-related content and sharing that information with you guys. Other than that, I'll see you guys next week on Great Market.